This is a true story. The reconstructions are based on original cockpit voice recordings and eyewitness accounts. No family wants to lose a loved one, daughter, son. None of us think it's going to happen to our family. We read about these horrible crashes and we think, thank God, you know, and chances are it won't happen to us. The odds are in our favor. catastrophic failure that tore it from the sky. A shocking chain of negligence and error led to disaster. When a whistleblower mechanic from the airline tried to sound the alarm about faulty maintenance procedures, he was suspended from his job. This investigation exposes deeply worrying shortcomings in maintenance and regulation that afflict the airline industry. It shows how a series of devastating errors combine to produce a tragic accident one that could happen again. Release it! is a popular holiday resort on the Mexican Pacific coast, one of several Mexican destinations served by Alaska Airlines. Colleen Worley went there to celebrate a family birthday. The 34-year-old was a keen traveler who spoke Spanish well and had visited Mexico many times. returning from Puerto Vallarta, settle in for the three hours, 45 minute flight to San Francisco. In the warm afterglow of their holidays, they're looking to the future. Colleen and her fiance, Monty, were planning to start a family later that year. Pilots on flight 261 are very experienced. Both Captain Ted Thompson and First Officer Bill Tansky have thousands of hours flying MD-80s. They know the plane well. The MD-83 is one of a successful and popular family of rear-engined low-flying planes. Originally launched in 1980, over 1,100 were delivered worldwide. Flaps. Check, confirm. Spoilers, check, arm. But on January 31st, 2000, check. as they prepared Flight 261, Thompson and Tansky had no idea that deep in the plane's tail lay a crucial weakness. Take off. Her fiance Monty were planning their forthcoming wedding. They had announced their engagement at Christmas time, and so it was um, a time for everybody to sort of congratulate them. And so we decided we'd have a party for the family. Abby Miller Bush had visited Mexico with her husband Ryan and their friends to celebrate her new job at Microsoft. It's hard to describe. how joyful a girl she was. She was well known for that care that she had in her, a trait that you can't put a value on. Dean and I had been there a lot together, and it was the first time that he went without me. Dean taught me how to play. 
He was always up. He told jokes a lot. People described him kind of as a puppy dog. Shortly after takeoff, Captain Thompson and First Officer Tansky get the first sign of trouble. The horizontal stabilizer on the tailplane won't move. The pilots carry out a standard checklist to try and free the stabilizer. Stabilizer trim switch. Normal. Circuit breakers. Reset if tripped. D9, D10, D11, okay. The stabilizer on the MD-83 is a 40-foot wide surface at the front of the tail. It's like another wing. Together with the elevators at the rear of the tail, the stabilizer is used to adjust the angle of the plane in flight. The stabilizer wasn't moving. Thompson and Tansky assumed that there was a fault in the electric motors that move it up and down. They believed they could fix the problem. They had no idea they were in great danger. What they dealt with was something that, that really snuck up on them. It, it was not supposed to be a big deal. If it had been, they would have turned around and gone back in to the Mexican airfield they came out of. So it's perfectly all right to troubleshoot him. The pilots repeatedly try the two switches that operate the stabilizer. The primary motor is activated by both the switch on the control stick, known as the pickle switch, and the sliding suitcase handles on the central console. Either system operative. No. Both systems inoperative. Consider stab jam. Do not use autopilot. Check. The jam stabilizer is pushing the aircraft down toward the ground. At 28,500 feet, the pilots switch off the autopilot and fly the plane manually. They have to pull back hard on the control column to push the nose of the plane up. This requires considerable physical effort by the pilots. The plane climbs for the next seven minutes to its cruising altitude of 32,000 feet. As they fly up the coast, the pilots contact their airline's maintenance department for assistance. Maintenance, we need to know if any faults like this got reported recently for this aircraft. Whether there are any switches that we might not be aware of that can get those motors turning again. Roger 261, I... Can verify no history on your aircraft in the past 30 days. No, we didn't see anything in the logbook. I use the example of the, the average layman, I think, can understand. If you try your, uh, to start your car and it doesn't crank, you try jiggling the, the key in the socket and then try it again. And I think that the crew was probably understandably going through a lot of these, well, maybe it'll work now, or let's try this, let's try that. The pilots need to think about what will happen when they descend for landing. How will the plane behave? Will they be able to control it? But several minutes after requesting help from the ground, they are getting no advice. As Flight 261 approached Los Angeles off the coast, the problems on board were about to get far worse. Pilots on the crippled Alaska Airlines Flight 261 are flying manually at 32,000 feet in a plane that has a jam stabilizer, which is forcing the plane's nose down. The pilots have another go at freeing up the jam stabilizer. They switch on both the electric motors that control it. This will click it off. 